How's it going you guys? So recently there's been a lot of hubbub and news about this really awesome service known as ChatGPT. For those of you guys that aren't aware of it, it's basically a chatbot sort of AI program that allows you to ask a lot of very complex questions and a lot of the times it can actually give you very accurate answers. Particularly when it comes to programming, it's become a very popular thing for searching. You can kind of think of it as a really powerful stack overflow or you can look at it as sort of a really powerful peer programming tool. So it's pretty awesome and it's gotten a lot of news recently. Now I myself have played with it a decent amount and I've been really impressed with a lot of what it can find and what it can do. And so as a result I decided it would be a really fun program to play around with actually uh, creating a front end for it in Emacs. I thought this would be interesting both for my learning as well as your learning and I thought this would be a great way to introduce you guys to kind of interacting with remote asynchronous processes, interacting with online services, a lot of other stuff that a lot of uh, Emacs sort of talks have not really talked about too much. Luckily, the entire front end that I was able to create is only about 200 lines of code. So really anybody with a tiny bit of knowledge of Elisp can actually wrap their head around it. And I'll be explaining it later on in this video. Now, my goal when creating this was to basically simplify the process since right now, what you'd have to do if you wanted to kind of look something up really quickly is you have to go to the actual online program. You'd have to type in your information. So say for example, if you wanted to see what you needed to change about some code, you'd have to copy paste it, uh, log in, all that sort of stuff. With this, luckily that removes a lot of that process and you can access it all right from within Emacs. Now with this, you can get ChatGBT to refactor code. You can get it to attempt to fix issues with your code. You can get it to write documentation for your code and you can get it to even write tests for your code. Now for lazy programmers like me, this sounds like a godsend, especially for things that are a bit of a pain in the butt to do, like writing documentation. Getting a lot of the busy work of uh, writing quick documentation can be really nice when you're using this, as well as being able to generate tests. Although that being said, I don't want you guys to go ahead and think, oh, okay, I can generate tests with this. And I don't have to really think about it. Obviously, the tests and information it gives you are only going to be so good as what you give it. So without any more delays, let's go ahead and hop into a demo. So the first of our demos will be the basic prompt. So to do this, all we will do is do meta x chat GPT prompt. And so when we run that, it will give us this little prompt down here and we can type when was the queen born question mark. And then it will run a little quest and give us the output down here. Now we could do something more complicated. So if we run that again and we do write me a hello world in Emacs Lisp, we get a very simple hello world program. So as you guys can see, it's pretty responsive and uh, it's all asynchronous. So really quickly, let's just run the last command and I can move around. And then when it gets the response, it will immediately display it. So we don't lock up the editor during these requests. That is the basic prompt. Now we can also get it to explain code. So for example, let's write some quick Emacs Lisp. Now, as you guys can see, this code is pretty simple. All it does is simply multiply um, whatever number we give it by two. So we can go ahead and evaluate that and just check that it works. Multiply by two, two, and down here we get four. Pretty straightforward. So now we can go ahead and actually uh, select this region and we can do GPT explain region and it will attempt its best to explain what's going on here. And so as you can see, this code defines a function called da 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 da. It takes a single argument num and returns the result multiplying that argument by two. That's the explanation. Now we can also get it to generate tests and the process is very similar. Now instead of explain, just do gen test for region. There we go. And now we get some actually usable tests. So we can just go ahead and paste that in here. Let's evaluate that and then we can do ERT. This is basically a testing framework built into Emacs and we can go ahead and run these tests and we can see that one test failed, which is this one right here. And it does all these tests. So it checks that two times two is four, four times two is eight and two times zero is zero. Now, obviously this isn't um, the most coverage that we could get, but it does actually write real tests for our code, which is really impressive. Now we can also get it to try and fix our code. So to do this, uh, let's just change this num to one. Now, as you guys can guess, this is not going to work anymore because now it's multiplying the number y one, but we can go ahead and do the same thing. So we can do fix a region and then it will just take a second and we will get this code does not work because it multiplies da, 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 by a single argument num. Ooh, 
So here you can see that it's not always perfect. It made a mistake here. Let's see if maybe we added, um, for example, a document string. Let's try this out and see if it can figure out what is wrong here. There we go. So now, as you can see, let me just enlarge the little area here. It will actually say that the issue is that it should accept that it should be using a two to multiply, not a one. And then it even gives us the corrected code. Now, next up, we have the prompt and replace. So here, this is very similar. Um, we can give it some information here. So we can say, write a hello world in Emacs Lisp. And then deleting all of this, let's just go ahead and do GPT. And then we will do prompt and replace. Takes a little second. There we go. And we get a nice little hello world in Emacs Lisp. Now, obviously it's not perfect because it does like move the cursor around and everything. Um, so a better way to do this would have been to actually run it here. And there we go. And now we get our hello world. Our final demo will be on the actual ways to Im integrate this into Embark, which is actually relatively straightforward. So if I go to my Embark section in my init.el, you'll see that I have added a few sections here. Now, luckily, uh, since I use use package, you can actually just add these as bindings. Um, so right here, I have a file map, which really doesn't do anything here, but I have a defin map uh, and a general map and then a region map. Um, now, there's a couple of useful ones here. Probably the most useful one is the actual um, fixes and explanation stuff. So basically, you can just bind them to your region mappings, um, whatever one you'd like to use. So just to give it a bit of a challenge, let's see if we can actually uh, use some of this. So let's go ahead. And so as you can see, we have a defin create test for region. Um, but here we'll just use select the region and we will actually use the Embark explain. Oh, sorry, explain with chat GPT. And let's see if it can actually explain what's going on in our use package section. It's pretty complex. Uh, this package, this code sets up the Embark package for Emacs and binds a certain combination of keys. Um, this is this is a mix of accurate and inaccurate. So as you guys can see, it's not the greatest at explaining um, a lot of stuff that requires a lot of history and knowledge. Um, but you can obviously get like explanations for something like this. So explain, explain. There we go. And then we will get a nice little, so this code add a, adds a hook for the minimum for setup activity. Um, pretty neat. Uh, so it does kind of try its best to explain the code, but obviously it is not perfect. Um, but obviously, as you guys can see, the point of this was mostly just showing how easy it is to um, integrate Embark. And as well as before, we had the prompt and replace uh, right here. You can do the same thing just using uh, Embark chat prompt there we go and then it will be prompted here and this can be useful especially if you have like kind of some questions in your org notes um i haven't gone about actually trying to integrate it into org mode um, as you guys can see so some of you guys are probably wondering how do i do this and maybe like what sort of programs do i need installed or anything luckily this is all done with built-in emacs functions so there's nothing you guys really need to worry about in fact the entire code base is around 200 ish lines so it's not too complicated um, and i'll kind of break down how it works since in theory this is kind of a complicated program but since it's very small and simple um, i think this should offer a pretty decent starting point for people trying to get into the slightly more advanced emacs lisp concepts so i'll give you an overview of how it works so we have rg and so this is kind of the function that we were using before the chat gpt prompt and so this takes our prompt and then it takes a function fn and so basically what it will do is it will take this prompt and it will create a uh, request so it'll take a request to ignore my bad spelling there and then that request will actually reach out to the open so this will reach out to the open ai um, API and then eventually we get a response now the request part right here This is actually a function which does some extra little work on the side to create a function to uh, Kind of take this request. We'll turn it into a buffer with our actual um, Important information, All right? And then after it's got this buffer it will call this function with the buffer. So here it's calling buffer and so now we can actually kind of process this, take the responding text and do with it what we please. Now, all of the functions that we have actually kind of uh, wrap this. 
So this core prompt function that I was using before interactively is actually the core of our entire API, right? And so basically all of these regions and everything, all we're doing is kind of appending some text to the region, turning it into uh, some string that we will then pass to the prompt. And then we give it an extra uh, callback function to kind of print it out how we want it to look. So this is actually relatively simple and we can go ahead and jump into the code and kind of dig a bit deeper. So I've gone ahead and actually narrowed down to just the core function that we were using before, the chat GPT function. And so as you can see, we take a prompt, like I mentioned, and a callback function. Now there is this little interactive part right here. For those of you guys that haven't kind of played around with this in Emacs, interactive is kind of a way to uh, sort of fill in these arguments. So here I do this read string. And so that will allow us to give us that little prompt that we did before. And then when it's called interactively, instead of actually kind of prompting for a callback or anything, we just use this default callback right here, which will basically take the buffer we receive that I was talking about before. So this is the response um, contained in this buffer. And we are basically turning it into a view mode so we can kind of easily quit it and navigate it really simply and making it able to be um, written over just in case the user wants that. Um, and then finally, we switch the other window to that. And so as you guys remember, just really quickly, prompt hello. So while it's running, uh, you'll see right here that it switches to that other buffer um, and just opens it. Now, right here, this is the actual code itself that's actually doing a lot of the heavy lifting. So what we're doing is we're calling to this private function called query open API. Uh, and we give it a prompt, like I said before, and we give it another callback function, which will basically um, erase the buffer, it will insert the results, and it will call our callback function on that buffer. So this is, might seem a little bit strange, but it'll make a bit more sense when we actually go to the definition. So now when we go to this actual function, you'll see that right here, we actually get your open API token, which is just an environment variable right here. And then we kind of set up information for actually making the request, set up the request method to be a post and then the headers. And this is kind of contains our actual API key right here. So the request data is basically JSON. Um, and here we're kind of writing it as an A list and then we convert it using JSON and code into JSON. And so this will be the actual body of our post. Okay. And then finally we call this function uh, URL receive which will basically asynchronously call to the API and then it will take our callback function right here and it will parse the response whenever we get it. And so this is kind of the URL that we are reaching out to. And when we call our parse response, we give it the callback function we are given. So from right here, we give it the callback functions. So that way when we are finished parsing the response, we will simply uh, call our callback function on the actual data we get back to our prompt. Now, if we look at each of these functions, you'll see that all they're doing is really just wrapping our prompt function um, and appending some extra text to the end of the buffer saying, why does this code work? Um, and other things kind of like saying like, um, what does this code do? Reference, so refactor, refactor this code, uh, prompt with region basically does the exact same thing, but instead it takes the actual region as the string that we are prompting with. Um, and then the region replace is actually pretty interesting. We use save excursion to kind of save the point that the cursor is at. And then we actually use this to be able to jump back, change the code. Um, so that way, if we wanted to do, say, for example, write API query in Emacs Lisp. And then if we go ahead and do region replace, we'll take a little second, but we can still move around um, and it will actually replace that little region that we had there before. As a result, we don't really have to worry too much about keeping state consistent. The biggest issue is that a lot of these are going to be writing to a global buffer, which if you do chat GPT, this is kind of the buffer that's constantly being overwritten. So these conflict, so these uh, different API requests can overlap and interfere with each other. As of now, I haven't really gone about actually uh, solving that issue. That's kind of the core basis of how this actual package works. I'll give a link down to it in the description um, and you guys can kind of poke around in it. Uh, feel free to ask me if you have any questions and I'd be happy to help you out. And yeah, so as I said before, the actual code to this is not too complicated. Uh, I just thought this was a fun little thing to play around with and I actually tend to use it quite a lot. I find it really helpful. Um, and hopefully you guys will too. I'll have a link down in the description, like I mentioned before, where you guys can give it a try yourselves. 
And just before we cut things off, I just wanted to give a big shout out to my supporters on Patreon. I would like to thank Danger Rimp, Will Taylor, Andre Tar uh, Tarkin, Alexander Artomenko, Jim Lawson, McGill, Russell Willis, and Connor G. I really appreciate it, you guys. It means a lot to me to have you guys supporting me, um, as well as actually helps me kind of keep the videos coming. Um, recently, I've had a lot of trouble just due to you know, life getting in the way. Uh, and now that I finally have a tiny bit of time to kind of record a lot of these, I really want to try and make it up to you. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. As well as wanting to thank my supporter on GitHub sponsors, which is Brian Jenks. I also really appreciate your contributions, man. All of you guys, thank you so much. It means a lot. And that's the end of the video for today. I hope this kind of gave you guys a really interesting look at how you guys can implement a fairly complex and fairly powerful thing with just a little bit of elisp like i said before only like 200 lines and most of that is just repeated code that i could probably simplify even further if i wanted to down to like 150 maybe even less anyways that's it for now thanks i'll see you next time mm -hmm.